Hello and welcome back to Unstructured Ramblings here on Raw till 51am. We've had a number of political guests here on the show, such as Lemba Opic, Natalie Bennett, Sir Edward Davey, but now we are joined by Mr Winston McKenzie, and he is joining us here as the English Democrat candidate for Mayor of London. Winston, how are you? I'm cool, I'm cool. You're cool, fantastic. Uh, now, connor has got the first question uh, about uh, your London Mayor bid. Okay. Yes, hello Winston. Uh, what are your priorities for London Mayor? My priorities for London Mayor? Yes, to, yes please. Well, my first priorities, the main, one of the main priorities are to immigration. I have to put that stuff on my list. Mm. And the reason why I have to put immigration at the top of my list is simple, because the mayor, the, the position of mayor is the second highest position in the country, and it carries a lot of sway, a lot of influence. And it's the influence of the mayor that needs to be impressed upon central government to bait this situation. I'm not talking about putting a complete ban on immigration. I'm an I'm a immigrant myself and proud. But what I am saying is that we have to manage and control the amount of people coming into the country because it's pointless making tar- setting targets for education or, ho- or housing or jobs when we don't know how many people are coming in a year. You'd argue, Winston, that it, it, it sort of prevents a cohesive society, would you? prevents a cohesive society no plans or any groundwork has been taken up to work out where these where people are going to live how they're going to be educated and mm. no one no one is allowed to talk about it because immediately so you speak about it you're a racist you know now they're going to call me racist well winston on uh, another issue for london mayor the housing crisis in london what mm. how much of an issue do you see that as oh it's massive and the people who are suffering most our tomorrow's generation, mm. like yourself. You know, imagine, you know, you're living at, in, in many, many cases, living at home until you're 25 years old or 30 years old with mummy and daddy. How demoralizing is that for any young person c- coming through today? Where is the hope? Where is the light at the end of the tunnel? It's as though there isn't anything. Mm. The despondency amongst young people these days is palpable. I can taste it, I can smell it, and I can see it in their attitude. And I feel for them. I totally agree. And it's a massive issue, particularly for us three sitting here, you know, wondering, can we afford a house in London? But on to Jack, who has a question about something slightly different. This was a pre-submitted question mm. from our Facebook page. Yeah. Uh, do you think that you'd stand a good chance against Anthony Joshua? Oh, come on. That guy, <laughs> <laughs> get out of here, man. <laughs> He's a heavyweight. I'm just a little lightweight. Have you seen, have you ever met Anthony Joshua? No. <laughs> I haven't met him I, personally. Yeah, oh, mate, he's not. about seven foot. Oh, it's like Hercules, man. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think one of your brothers would stand a chance against no, him? No, we haven't got anybody big enough to fight that guy. Really? I mean, you shake his hand. His hand is like three of one of ours. And it, I thought Frank Bruno was massive, but <laughs> this guy towers over him. Yeah. Oh, mate. Well, and and I'm a, a big fan as a well. A clear no there from Winston in <laughs> reference to fighting Anthony <laughs> Joshua. Oh, now, the man. next question is from Connor Hand. And again, Winston, as I say, you know, you don't have to answer this, but this is just the question we had submitted from Toby Cox. Yeah, from Toby Cox, Winston, not yeah. on a hand. Um, is Winston McKenzie a man of no fixed principles or does his diverse array of tenures instead reflect the changing principles of political parties? Well, I'm going to try to answer this one because the first line of that question is a bit like... It's a, provocative, take, yeah. Take yeah. A, le- a left hook, you know, in the centre of the ring in the 11th round. But what I will say is that the diverse array of policies that the political parties are submitting today angers me Mm. and it just shows me how out of touch they are with tomorrow's generation in particular tomorrow's generation when we have to go abroad to find our nurses our doctors our it um students baffling baffling i have to wonder what is the agenda with these Mm. others others and recently I've, I've, i've worked out you know i have nothing against academics but the simple fact is, it takes a variety of people to run a country. And those in government today are not reaching out to the, into the wider community. They're not interested in people who are struggling. They're not interested in people who are uneducated or want to be educated. They're not interested in that. It's as though there's a new agenda. Mm. And, you know, sadly, and what, unfortunately, people with that money are the losers. And what are the English Democrats talking about in particular with that that you well, would say appeals to you? Well, what appeals to me most is quite simple which is what I found in UKIP. I went into UKIP thinking I had a great opportunity to move up the ladder and carry the word of ordinary people. And suddenly, they saw I was serious, 
too serious and you know I was talking about practical uh, working class people mm. and I began to become to get blocked and indeed there were a couple of racists in the party well I didn't really get on with two people and you, you directly had experience with that do you feel oh yeah I had experience with that but it wasn't just that you know I'm not I wouldn't class the party as institutionally racist at all okay you, as in every party you've got you've got people who are up for all sorts of horrendous crimes you know and um, you keep or any other party you always have your dark horses but um I believe that in today's generation, today's society, these guys are behind the times, you know. Mm. And um, I can't wait for the married elections. I really can't wait. <laughs> and on that sort of the subject of UKIP, Jack has a specific question about that. Yeah, so uh, this is from Miles Hunt. You sort of touched upon there your reasons for leaving UKIP. We were just wondering if there's any more that you'd like to say on that. And also, what's your opinion on the party's future? The party has a great future because... Um, what I call the world's moving population will determine the fate of UKIP. And UKIP have uh, this whole question of the EU would never have come about had it not been for uh, UKIP's Nigel Farage and his team. So, uh, you know, thank God that UKIP existed to bring about this EU question of the EU and the world's moving population. But I do believe that UKIP has a bright future and they will um, diversify from immig- just immigration mm. Because there are so many intelligent people joining the party, you know, in, in all, in all, from all walks of life. So it can be uh, their major asset. Their main asset is their leader, Nigel Farage, yeah. who I had immense respect for and still do. And um, but I would like to see um, English people really nail their colours to the flag, yeah. flag of St George, and identify themselves. Because every other country in the world is doing that right now, mm. and you see it happening right across the spectrum, especially in America where you've got this Donald Trump coming through like a, 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 an express train. Yeah. He actually reminds me of me in a way. <laughs> Donald Trump reminds you of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's not as, I'm, not as, um, I'm not as ruthless as he seems to be. And on the, the last sort of thing on Farage and UKIP, Conor Hand would like to ask you a question. Yeah. Your favourite friend, Conor yeah. Hand. <laughs> I'm right, Conan. Again, he likes Conan. <laughs> We've got to meet up and have a sparring session. We, we do, we do. I think it. I think it would be an interesting chat. Um, you, you've previously said that you uh, found your home in UKIP, and yeah. then subsequently compared Farage to Jesus and yourself to one of his disciples. No. Um, have you changed your view? No. See, this is the way they put it out all the time, Connor. You know, I didn't compare Farage to Jesus. What I said was that, that the commentator said to me you know um, Nigel Farage you know they keep on about this one man syndrome in UKIP they oh, kept yeah. on about it and Nigel Farage is only one man I just simply quit that Jesus was one man and it bl- got blown up out of all proportion you know but um, I, I, I admire the guy for having the balls to stand up and bring it to the uh, attention of the British that we are being chastised and disenfranchised by the European Union whereby we all sit at the table government ministers and we do not have a say. So what's the point of being there? We're voted out on at 95% of the policies. We're voted out. Nobody listens to us. And now, Winston, on a, a light-hearted issue now, Jack mm. would like to ask about a different experience very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> we were wondering how you found uh, Celebrity Big Brother. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Good to Absolutely hear. Absolutely amazing. I mean... You know, I met up in close, I got into close proximity with quite a few gays, you know. And, you know, what, I, what did anger me about Big Brother, though? They were just so insistent that I was this homophobic, some real homophobic people hater, idiot, you know. But the fact is, I've got nothing against anyone how they live their lives. But if you ask me, um, do I agree with something? And living in this wonderful country of ours, Mm. where we are entitled to the freedom of expression. I'm bound to... I told the truth. I yeah. said, no, I'm not for that type of thing. But how people live their life is entirely up to them. I mean, what the hell could be wrong with that? Thank you very much, Winston. And very quickly, we're going to move on to Connor asking about your future. But after that, very quickly, we do this with all the politicians on the show. We have sort of 10 very quick-fire questions. Oh. So, Connor, the last sort of serious question before we move on to the, the, the funny issues. What it next? It would have to come from Connor now, wouldn't it? It have to come from Connor. <laughs> yeah. We've got, we've got a sparring session coming up. Now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sparring, you man. Uh, <laughs> what next for uh, Winston McKenzie? 
after London Mayor, obviously. Well, yes. um, I'll continue in the same vein in the political field. Obviously, I've got a lot of um, things going on with the media now in terms of um, you know these reality TV shows yeah. and what have you, because they pay well. Um, so um, I'll, I'll be looking to continue um, working with young people mm. because I believe, that, you know, I lecture in schools, colleges, universities, and I believe that unless someone gets out there and really pushes the, uh, you know, pushes the boat out for tomorrow's mm. people. Yeah. You know, we're gonna we're we're already on the way to losing a whole generation. At the top of my agenda is housing. Um, you have to. There's no one out there to inspire. You know, which enable which will enable the people to aspire to greater things. And you know, it's not happening. So I will endeavour to do all I can to keep fighting, as it were. Yes, and promote tomorrow's people. Yeah. You know, you see all these old fogies now on the on the box and what have you. They haven't got a clue, mm. and no one's listening to the <laughs> wider community. So I will keep um keep up my work as a community man and entrepreneur. Thank you, Winston. And now on these very quick uh, light questions so firstly boxing or politics well politics politics Absolute politics now ukip or conservatives <laughs> Shucks, man ukip all day long ukip favorite singer um ray charles and on that winston we hear that you have a very good singing voice would you mind singing us a line yeah i can do that take these and this applies to the eu okay take these chains from my heart and set me free. You've grown cold and no longer care for me. All my faith in you is gone. But the EU lingers on. <laughs> <laughs> Take the change from my country and set me free. Uh, have you rehearsed that one before, Winston? No. Nope. <laughs> please, please, can you release a single, Winston? Please. Oh, that'd be Honestly, please. <laughs> oh, Thank you very much for that. Thank you. In EU or Brexit? I think I've, this question's been answered. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, favourite food? Um, Favourite food? Food has to be steak, steak. and rice and peas. Oh, nice. Political idol? Poli Dr. Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King. Next US president? Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Best party leader you've worked under, other than uh, the current English Democrat leader? Oh, Nigel Farage. Nigel Farage. Least yeah. favourite politician? My least favourite politician has to be David Cameron. David Cameron. Yeah. Is, <laughs> would you still class Croydon as a dump, out of interest? Croydon is a dump. Yeah. The people have been disenfranchised. Fair enough. Uh, what is your realistic ambition for London Mayor? So what do you think you can achieve from the campaign? Uh, du during the campaign or after I become Mayor? You will become Mayor. And uh, if you could have any p position in politics at all across the world, what would it be? And I take it it wouldn't be President of the EU Commission. Thing. Mayor of London. Mayor of London. Yeah. And which politician would you most like to fight? Oh. oh so knock him out, as it were. Yeah, he's retired now. The, the Labour man, can't remember his name. Labour man. He's retired. Um, uh, I get, oh, most like to knock about. No, yeah, no, most like to punch up, as it were. Tony Blair. Tony Blair. Tony Blair. Fair enough. <laughs> and Don't finally... Out. <laughs> what is your best political achievement to date? Um, my best political achievement to date was, I guess, when I uh, I um I, t I challenged in the two thousand and eight mayoral election, mm. and I got um near nigh on fifty thousand first and second preference votes, and you know I only had eight weeks to to challenge to make that challenge. Fantastic. I'm Winston McKenzie, and you're listening to Raw fifty one a.m. Thank you very much, Winston. Cheers, guys. All the Thank best. Thank you very much, Winston. Talk soon.